So through the years, you know, we've expanded the menu and we built this place about, this was built in 1946. And uh, one of the big things is the celebrities that have come here. And there's about 200 pictures on the wall. And so, you know, you want in a product to have some credibility. And if celebrities eat there, people think it must be good, right? So, you know, the key is a lot of product, tasty, hopefully you'll agree. Um, great service. Most of our employees have been here 15 to 20 years. So we bonus everybody every weekend. So everybody gets motivated and excited. Uh, and then promotion's a big part of this. I mean, we're constantly trying to get on radio, television. Outside we have a banner that says, Huel, we don't miss you. And he's a famous television host. That, that has a TV show, and so, you know, we put that out on the business wire, hopefully, maybe TV cameras are going to we don't know, but, uh, so that, that's, and then the atmosphere, the original atmosphere. So we've expanded, we have 10 other pinks, there's one in Ohio, there's two in Las Vegas, there's one in LAX, uh, there's one in San Diego, Universal Studios, and just today, actually, we're going to launch, we're going to try to launch a national a national expansion, uh, and uh, we're doing that by trying to connect with firms that are located in stadiums and airports. Our strategy is to expand by going into stadiums and airports and amusement parks, that type of thing, rather than in shopping centers. A little less competition. You know, it's just yeah, sort of our game. When, when people prefer hot dogs. Yeah, when they like to eat hot dogs. They started pinks with an extension cord that fired up this little push cart. And La Brea, fortunately, was a location, was a good location with a lot of car traffic, so they offered uh, curb service. And in those days, uh, the rent on this whole property, everything you see here, all the way to that office building, was $15 a month. Wow. Okay? That was what the rent was. And that was actually high. Yeah. And so, because hot dogs at that time were only 10 cents, so, you know, proportionally it was high. And in 1941, uh, the landlord raised the rent from $15 to $25 a month. And I know this sounds like ridiculously low amount of money, but percentage-wise, that's quite an increase. And so they uh, talked to the owner of the property, and they were able to borrow $4,000 at that time to buy all this property. And when you really get down to it, when you can control your destiny, your occupancy cost, your rent by owning the property, that allows you to stay in business, okay? Otherwise, the rent would keep going up and eventually put them out of business. So they saw that the rent would keep going up, and so they borrowed this money, bought the property, and in 1941, they, they bought that. And they built a smaller version of what you see now. And then in 1946, this was built. So they, they started off with a hot dog, and they were very fortunate. They, they got a good hot dog. It snapped when you bit into it, so that became their signature. And there was only one hot dog on the menu, one hamburger, and one tamale. That was it. It was very simple. Uh, and that's the way it was for all those years. But what helped a lot was that they got a lot of notoriety because movie stars started coming here because we're surrounded here by all the many famous studios. Paramount Studios, 20th Century Fox, uh, Universal Studios, Walt Disney, they were all around here, so a lot of movie stars that came in before they made any money, they would come here and they'd eat hot dogs because it was cheap, and then when they became famous, they came back and they signed pictures on our wall. And so when customers come here, they say, oh my God, you know, if Nicole Kidman's been here, or Tom Hanks has been here, or Bill Cosby, this must be good. So that, that helped in terms of, in terms of the, the promotion. So the key to the business, if you will, is you've got to have a really good product that people like. And then we expanded the product so that we have about 30 different varieties of hot dogs and hamburgers on the menu. That would bring people back. So the product's got to be really good. In terms of the service, most of our employees have been with us 15 or 20 years. So our customers that come here, it's very rare in a fast food business to have customers that actually know the names of this. So you've got to make the business really personal, not just any kind of organization that you know, nobody knows who they are, and there's a lot of turnover. So we wanted to make sure that we kept all our, all our employees. So the service and employees are critical. The next thing that was critical was atmosphere. So we have this original atmosphere. It's very rare. We're on a, in a good location on a business street, surrounded by probably within 
a mile of pinks, there's probably 35,000 people. So that was really good that you're right in a good location. And then the fourth thing is you got to constantly promote and brand and market because you're just a hot dog stand. You're just ordinary. So you got to kind of separate yourself and distinguish yourself. So what distinguished us was the quality of the food, the, the history of the place, the celebrity connections. That all that all really you know combined to keep business going. And we serve today anywhere from a thousand to fifteen hundred hot dogs a day. So, okay, so then we built up our name and then we said, how can we expand? And we said, well, we, we, want, we were very conservative and we didn't want to take a lot of risk. So the strategy was build up the name enough with television and radio so that people would want to come to us, basically pay us to use our name, use our product, use our specification, and give us a percentage of their business so we didn't have to invest in it. So the first thing that we did, we said, we got 36,000 people within a mile or so, but how do we get out to five miles? And how do we get out and get our name out to the rest of the city and rest of the region? And what we decided to do was promote ourselves through a concept called Chili Dogs for Charity. So we said, what would television stations want to see? And we said, what they would want to see are two things. They want to see celebrities, and they want to see something done for charity. So what we did is, every couple of years, we would do a Chili Dogs for Charity where we'd invite famous celebrities, movie stars, TV people, radio personalities, to Pink's each night for like 11 nights in a different year. And 11 nights, all the money would go to the charity of their choice, but the TV stations came. Well, what that did was, once you're on television, you're now on television in San Diego, in Orange County, Ventura County, and it's spread out. And that's what got, that's why you can get to 1,000, 1,500 dogs a day because you got people driving in, and many of the people in line here have come in from 15 or 20 miles, all right? Ne next step was, how can we get the name out to the nation? Now this is just a little hot dog stand, and we're trying to build a customer base that goes to New York. I mean, that was the thing. So we realized that what we had to do, we had to get on national television. Well, what connected at the same time that we decided this was a lot of cable stations were expanding beyond just the network stations. You've got Food Channel, Travel Channel, all of these, and they go, go around the country. So we started inviting famous people from those stations to come to Pink's and tell the story of a 73-year-old hot dog stand that's still here today and that got people learning about pinks in Atlanta and Florida. The next thing was, how can we build ourselves internationally? Well, everything that is done in the U.S. is copied somewhere else. It's copied in Japan, it's copied in Indonesia, it's copied in Australia, it's copied in Germany, and they wound up with their food channels and their travel channels. And so we started getting people coming in from around the world here. Now, now that we got this national attention and somewhat international, now what we're trying to do is build our brand to expand nationally. We, we expand it, so you gotta, be a, you gotta prove to people that you actually can be successful beyond your current location. And so we expanded into locations around the region. So we've got 10 other pinks. There's, uh, there's a pinks in Orange County, there's two pinks in, in the Valley, there's a pink, two pinks in Las Vegas, there's a pinks in Ohio, there's a pinks in San Diego. So we wanted to prove to national companies that actually pinks has legs beyond just La Brea and Melrose where you are right now. And those other places are doing well, fortunately. So now our next step is to figure out if we can expand. So our strategy of expansion was not to just go into shopping centers and be any other kind of commodity restaurant. But we wanted to go where we had somewhat of a monopoly in Pete. There was a lot of foot traffic. So we said the places that we want to expand are airports, we want to expand in amusement parks, we want to expand in stadiums, baseball, football stadiums, we want to expand in major universities, and expand into military bases. There isn't a lot of competition there, and we felt that those people would all like hot dogs and hamburgers. It's a very casual and formal atmosphere in all those locations. So just today, actually, we're just starting the attempt to go national. We created a, 
uh, a brochure for pinks, very professional brochure, that will be sent out to national franchise companies to see whether they want to take pinks beyond the 11 locations that we have right now. So that's sort of the strategy from a little hot dog stand that's trying to just grow and figure out how to do it without investing a lot of money, without taking a lot of risk, and without having a lot of partners. Because when you have partners, you got a lot of people that have a lot of varying opinions, and so we try to keep it just family oriented, which is us making the decisions about new products, expansion, how to do it, and the strategy. So that's kind of the story of, of Pink's, if you will. And my name's Richard Pink, this is Gloria Pink, and that's where the name came from. You designed from the first location here, right. and you, the, the big step that you designed to move into the second location, yes. and the third and fourth, yeah, uh, and yes. so forth. Um, what made you feel comfortable or confident enough to to move move forward? Because yes. when we are very, very strong here, yes. normally people kind of afraid to take risks, right? Right. Yeah. So okay. what's your... Well, there were, there were, there were two, two things in that. That's a great question. In order for anybody to operate a PACE, here was our condition. You had to have 500 employees in food and beverage. You had to have at least 20 other locations. And you had to be doing volume of $50 million in your overall operation. The reason for that is we needed to make sure that the quality of pinks in these other locations would be maintained. And if they had a big food and beverage operation that was successful, then we had the confidence that they would maintain the quality. Now we have somebody that goes out to these locations and monitors the quality and trains and so forth, but you can't be there every hour. You can control your own individual location every hour, but you can't control those. So you had to go into big operations that, that had the organization that would maintain the quality. The next question was, what about the risk? Okay, in terms of our case, we did not want to invest any money in these locations. So we built up our name so that they would personally invest. So to build out a Pink's today cost somewhere between $500,000 and a million dollars. That was gonna be their money. They had to have the confidence to invest their money. So first of all, that's good because you get them to commit right their own money so they're going to want to make sure it's successful so they would invest and then they would pay us a percentage of their gross revenue in order to use our name and our products so the risk of the capital was very minimal on our part but the risk is capital was very big on their part which would get their commitment to do a good job Did that answer it yep thank you. good Yes, the, the, the issue with, uh, it sounds like you have something in mind, but the issue with <laughs> um, exporting hot dogs to other countries is always a challenge because they all have very tight regulations on the quality of the beef that they will take. So it would have to be a country that would accept a Pink's product. We think our product is very good, but that country may say, well, I don't want hot dogs in my, I want you to produce the hot dogs in my country. So then now you have to duplicate the flavor of our hot dog in that other country. Now there are flavor chemists out there that will dissect our hot dog to figure that out. But that's part of the challenge is exporting to that country. Then again, if we were to export anywhere, it would have to be to an organization that frankly with a country, we would want to know that they would commit to open at least 10 pinks in that country, not just one little hot dog stand. But yes, we would be interested. First, this was great. Thank Good. you. Uh, great. And building off of the last question, what about uh, into the areas like Eastern Europe where there is not only uh, similar regulations in place for quality of meat sure. uh, imported, but also a uh, cultural history with that kind of a food stuff too? So, say, in the Czech Republic or Poland, this would be very, this would be very normal. They would, I mean, it would be a recognizable food because they right. themselves have it, it's not true. just because it's American sure. and everybody's seen a hot dog before. Right. So what you have to sell when you go anywhere is you got to have more than just a food product. In our case, it's a celebrity connection. So we would be, first of all, the Hollywood hot dog. We would say all the, the 
Hollywood celebrities that eat here, because everybody gets tied into that. And frankly, when you go around the world, most of the time, if you introduce an American product, they, they tend to take to it. I mean, McDonald's found that in Moscow, all of that. You know, and I think you build off of your food, your celebrity connection, your Hollywood relationship, and it's an American product.